Okay, now this one's gonna be a bit of a challenge. Let me show you what I got here. This is a BFK, a big friggin' knife. Check this out. Now that's... You call that a knife? You, well, yeah. But, this is the same fellow I've done some other of my, of my knife sheets for, and he's left-handed, and it seems like these knives only come in right-handed models. So what I'm going to do, what he wants me to do, is to make a knife sheath that's left-handed that fits that uses the same frog so it'll basically be the same thing except the other way around now also where that stud is on the frog he wants to have a retaining strap from the knife sheath this, this is pretty cool there we go. You come. That's so big I can't keep it screen. From the knife sheath around the back of this top strap. Yeah, from the knife sheath. I'll probably put it on this reinforcing piece. And come around here and um, connect to this stud on the frog. So that's gonna be pretty cool. But the thing is this sheath has a kind of construction I've never done before. It's stitched in the middle. And that stitching is kind of flattened down. So, I've been trying to come up with an idea of like a uh, conventional knife sheath. Whereas, it's got a, uh, like, a seam down the edge. Or a seam down both edges and using the same frog rivet and I was kind of toying with the idea of wetting the frog and molding it around the knife sheath but I thought you know I probably got some time and this is an interesting challenge it's something I've never done before that, that middle seam let me try something so what I did is get this thing out of the way is I took a couple of pieces of scrap actually this is a cutoff from a belt and I cut it in half where is there it is I took my dividers set them at eighth of an inch and made a line on each piece then I used my punch and I marked it all the way down on both pieces. My idea is to see if I can take my awl and put it in here and push it through so the stitch comes out in the middle like that. And then do the same thing to the other side. So this is where it's good to have a nice sharp awl. Um, trying to figure out how I'm going to stitch this, I'm not sure. But I'm going to stick a needle in there and stick the other piece on it like that. Put it in my little Irwin quick clamp. Now when I stitch the real thing, I'll put a piece of soft leather in it to, to not mar it. And I'm just going to hold it like that and see if I can stitch that, pull it tight, and then flatten it down and we'll see what we get with that. So um, I got me some thread. I got me my another needle. I got to straighten up a little bit first. Let's try this out and see what happens. All right, guys. Are. This may be a total and complete disaster. I'm recording. Hey, but uh, here we go. Okay. I know. Oy. 
once you get the stitches further along and it starts to hold itself together it'll be a little easier to stitch that isn't that cool I'm gonna continue stitching this and see how it comes out my thread's a little un uneven but I'm using the same thread that I intend to use on the knife sheath so it's kind of a real world test and I'm thinking that you know I'm kind of using the flex from the leather to help me along and we'll see how this comes out but I gotta remember how this is going in Nah, this isn't going to be easy, but you know, if it was, everybody would be doing it. Yeah, I'm thinking about grinding a flat spot on my awl, on the handle of my awl, I should say. trying to roll away from me. Pretty much the same technique I use when I'm doing a regular old saddle stitch. Um, I'm going to go on a little further and we'll check it out and see what I've got. Okay, I can tell that when I do this for real, I'm going to need more thread. But, it's coming out actually pretty good. And another thing, keep the all handy. Because even though the holes are pre-punched, they're not that hard, to, they're not that easy to find. So I go ahead, punch it again, give it a little wiggle, open the hole up. And I can pass the needle on through. <laughs> And usually I could pass the needle on through. Well, anyway. There we go. There we go. Like that. Well, this is one of the few times I actually don't say, I actually don't, when I'm doing stitching, and I'm talking about stitching, I always say, never drop the needles. They're either in your hand or in the leather. Well, this time, I need to manipulate the leather. So, I've got to drop the needle. <gasps> and this is tough on your fingers, too. Ah, uh, I pierced it. There you go. You still got to check to make sure you don't pierce your thread. At least I do. Because, uh, right there, I'll pierce it. And I check on each and every stitch because I don't want to go back and take the needles off and and redo it and go through the pain of the butt of having to lock the needles back on or pull the stitches out or something. When all I gotta do is check as I go along. Now I'm gonna stop at this point and we're gonna take a look at this. That's how it came out. Okay, that's on the front side. Turn the slide over here on the front side of it. And that's on the back side. No stitches on the inside to get snagged by the knife. That's really what I'm what I always try to do. Whether I recess them by cutting a groove or what. Um 
I wonder if I can do regular old back stitching. Oh, look at there. Let's see if I can back stitch this and uh, and end it that way, like a regular old leather stitch. Looks like it will. I'm going to do one more. And like I said, I think, <laughs> since this is just a test piece, I'm not going to back stitch it back as far as I would. Here we go. I'll say something like this. This is just for testing purposes only. But I do intend to use 9 ounce leather for the sheath. Because a big knife like that needs a big strong hook of leather. And I could tell already, just working on this little bit, that um, I'm probably only going to stitch a few inches at a time. And that's going to take a while. There we go. Yes, that needle is tight in that hole. All right. My friggin' lighter. My friggin' lighter. There it is. And just like regular, burn them off, mash them down. Gotta take my little hammer. And to beat the crap out of it. I swear I just heard it say ow. <laughs> Didn't say it that time. Oh, he's stuck. <laughs> but that's a joint I'm thinking about using. That actually worked. That was the first time I ever did any kind of stitch line like that. And, uh, any of you leather guys out there know the official terminology or the name of it? I'd like to know if this is a real stitch. I'm sure it is. It can't be something that I just thought up. Or could it? Anyway, next I'm going to have to make a pattern taking into consideration folding it over like this. You know, the thickness of the leather and all that silliness. And uh, also, I'm going to have to make a dummy knife. I'm going to have to go out to my garage and make a dummy knife to match that to mold this thing around. This is going to be an interesting project. See you next time.